Okay, hi everyone and uh, welcome to yet another day of a Boiler Ball pregame special. And yes, I know we're still a few days out. Our Boilermakers here in Phoenix getting ready to play North Carolina State on Saturday as we greet you here on this uh, Thursday evening. I'm Rob Blackman, this is Chris Foreman, this is Bobby Riddell. And a quick reminder, just in case maybe you didn't catch us yesterday, we'll be doing these daily shows here uh, for Boiler Ball, for Purdue basketball, for the different Purdue sports uh, media outlets um, throughout the week while we're here in, uh, in Phoenix. So uh, we're happy you can join us, just kind of do our best to provide you maybe a little bit of insight of what is happening with our ball club here as they prepare for the Final Four. And with that, I'll turn it over to Chris Foreman because he was the man, the point man today for our team as they got their first glimpse inside of the stadium and also their first glimpse at the mass throngs of media, Chris, who were here to see our Boilermakers today, and they had a long day today. Yeah, it was pretty wild today. Um, we left here about uh, 8.30 this morning. First thing was at 9.30. They do, you know, you've watched the Final Four before. You see all the shoots, the, the videos that they do before the game. So we, we had to do that uh, to get it going. But that was the first thing on the radar. And then, you know, about the next hour, for about an hour, they're doing, you know, NCAA, CBS, all the smoke, lasers, lights, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was pretty, pretty cool to see. Got some really good footage and content from it. So you'll see that tomorrow before the game. But, um, you know, we did that. Then we had an open after practice. We did the open locker room and, and a bunch of media there. Coach Painter did a press conference and uh, definitely will say it's the largest media contingents mm -hmm. I've been a part of. Um, you know, really cool to see the guys did a great job with it. They handled it well. So um, I think we're getting we're getting close to ready to play the game, I think. So uh, now there is an A-list celebrity that was part of the photo shoots with our guys today. But are we allowed to? Tell no, them? we're okay, not. So we're, right. we're we won't spill the beans on that. Yet. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, when you do see some of the uh, video production uh, elements uh, leading up to the game on Saturday, uh, let's just say there'll be an A-list celebrity there that you, you should recognize, I think, anyway. Uh, Bob Riddell, what about the actual practice itself? We had a chance to be in there and uh, watch our ball club practice for the first time uh, in the State Farm Center. That is the proper name, yes. State uh, Farm Stadium. Oh, State Farm Stadium, yep. thank you. Yep. Uh, Got to get that sponsorship right. <laughs> uh, State Farm Stadium, shooting in that football stadium, that massive football stadium, uh, different kind of a background, obviously, for shooting. And you and I, I know we were watching the first couple, three shots for our guys. And yeah, they have a, a few air balls in there, but they yeah. seem to get the hang of it after a while. No, no question. It's, it's definitely an interesting experience when you go from, you know, playing in traditional basketball venues uh, that from a depth perception standpoint is, is something you're more accustomed to where there's not a whole lot of space behind the basket uh, compared to what you, you deal with in these uh, football stadiums. Uh, they just the way they set these courts up there's just a ton of space because of the the size of these stadiums behind the basket and obviously from a depth perception standpoint there is an adjustment period but um, you know at the end of the day as a shooter you're going to be laser focused on the rim right. and so you know these guys are, are going to be uh, you know getting a ton of shots up here these next couple of days and trying to you know kind of recalibrate that but uh, the good shooters can find ways to make shots in uh, any sort of facility. One of the things I've noticed about this stadium, and they said the, the floor is basically like right in the middle. Mm, and sometimes yeah, right. they're adjusted to the ends or the right. sides or something. This one's like right in the middle. So you got a lot of space after be, behind both hoops. Well, so Bob can speak to that. Uh, tell me the year, Bob, when we were here for Sweet 2009, 16, yeah. 2009, your senior season, your final game, right? Yeah, my final uh, game. Yeah. In this very building uh, against UConn, uh, Bob made a shot. So he wasn't worried about the depth perception yeah, didn't problems. Affect me, of course. Uh, late in the game, <laughs> hit a big shot for the Boilermakers, but that was your final game as a senior. So obviously, uh, there I suppose there are some bittersweet memories for you coming back here to the same stadium in which your career ended. Yeah, a lot of mixed emotions because I was fortunate enough to make a shot in the NCAA tournament so just the fact is you know coming from little old walk on to making a shot in the NCAA tournament that's obviously a neat moment for me but yeah we end up losing the game and it's my final game ever and I have you know tears in the locker room after with my career being over so yeah a lot a big range of emotions there but it's fun being back uh, of course in this arena just thinking back to my playing days and yeah interesting you know looking back on that because we just talked about the court and the setup it's a little bit different setup this time around uh, consensus to Final Four compared to a Sweet 16 Elite Eight scenario. They actually, when I played, had the court in the end zone um, and had basically a curtain about the 50 yard line or so blocking right. off the other side of the field, tried to keep it relatively contained. We had a good crowd, but uh, we're not going to have the crowd that we're going to have here at the Final Four where they're making every single seat available and the court's smack dab, as you guys said, in the middle uh, of the stadium. Speaking of crowds, Chris Foreman, if 
social media is to be believed, and of course it always is. What I was reading earlier today, the tickets for this game, both Saturday and fingers crossed Monday, they're being gobbled up rather quickly, mostly by those living in the state of Indiana, from what I'm reading. Yeah, I, I, I assume we saw the same tweet about it, um, that the StubHub, you know, analytics or whatever it said, that people from Indiana have bought more tickets combined than people from the states of North Carolina, Connecticut, and Alabama. So if that means anything, you know, the Purdue fans have gobbled up a lot of tickets. It's going to be about a 65, uh, I think about 65,000 people in yep. attendance today, which, or, to, or Saturday, which will be the largest crowd ever to watch a Purdue basketball game. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you can believe that, you know, you think Purdue's going to have a rather sizable contingent. Mm -hmm in uh, State Farm Stadium. Can you imagine the uh, who's house, our house chant with some 65,000. Now, Chris made a little bit of a slip up a moment ago. He said tomorrow, a Freudian slip because Purdue fans, you can see our team tomorrow uh, at the State Farm Stadium because an open practice, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll have our practice at noon on Friday. Uh, everyone's encouraged to come out. It's free to the public. So uh, this will be a chance to see the Boilermakers before we take the floor on Saturday. So. Um, just a really good thing. They get out, they just shoot, they run up and down a little bit. They'll have some fun with it. So uh, it'll be good for the fans to come out and watch that practice. Uh, all right, so with that, we're going to take a real quick, sh a quil a real quick short break. That's easy for me to say, uh, because when we come back on the other side, uh, assistant coach Terry Johnson is going to join us. We're having coach Johnson on for a very specific reason. He's the only guy in our travel party that's ever been a part of one of these Final Fours. Uh, this is old hat for him in some ways. So we're going to talk to him about that when we come back uh, on this special edition of Boiler Ball pregame here from Phoenix, Arizona. Stay with us. Welcome back everyone to Phoenix, Arizona. Rob Blackman here, Bobby Riddell, my radio broadcast partner alongside, and the guy sitting in between the two of us is assistant coach Terry Johnson. I told you going to our little commercial break there that uh, Coach Johnson would be joining us for a very specific reason. As I mentioned, going to that break, Coach Johnson, None the rest of us, players, coaches, <laughs> media nerds, uh, we've never done this Final Four thing before. You have done it twice, yes. uh, both with Butler, once in Houston, once in Indianapolis. Uh, I guess let's start right there. For you, mm -hmm. never gets old, though, does it? No, it never gets old. <laughs> Winning never gets old, and then doing it with great people makes it even better. All right, so talk to me about what you uh, learned from those first two experiences with Butler that maybe has helped you personally here on a third go around. Uh, really, with the third go around, is just enjoy it, mm, enjoy yeah. it, and try to keep your same routine uh, as much as possible. Uh, obviously, you got a lot of media requests. Right. Don't look at it as, oh, I got to go do this. Look at it as, hey, let's go have fun with this, and then get back to our routine. Sure. As far as the Final Four goes, and playing in these big football stadiums, something we just talked about in the first segment, but you know, is that something you talk about with the players at all as they're playing in like a different type of venue than they're normally accustomed to, or you just say like, hey, this is basketball, we're, we're just doing our thing? You just kind of say it's basketball. Everybody knows you got to get your deceptions on the rim and mm -hmm. things like that, and the only way you get familiar with it is how many times you was able to be shooting the gym. Uh, we got the chance to shoot today, we'll shoot tomorrow, and then they have to warm up. Uh, before the game. So I think our guys, they got comfortable today. A few of them, I heard them say it at the end. Obviously, when you start, we start out with a drill right away. You got to run and they want to shoot jumpers, have to oh, shoot jumpers right away. It was ugly. <laughs> we, we, talk, we talk about that, yeah. yeah. But once you, you get the, the, your eyes together on it, and then now you're just playing. Uh, you mentioned something that kind of caught my attention there. You said you try to keep that uh, routine as normal as possible. What, let's face it, it's an abnormal situation. It's not easy, but from a coach, uh, from a coaching standpoint, how do you try to, uh, to pass that message along to the players that, guys, we do need to do our best yeah. <laughs> to keep our normal routine here? It, it, it's hard, especially like for coaches, like especially just the first two weeks. It, it's really like bang, bang. You play Sunday, then you know you play Friday, and you leave Thursday. Here, we got time. Yeah, right. And like, you got a lot of time. To be honest, I'm a lot fresher this year than I have been in the past at mm. this time of year. Uh, and it's, I think it goes to the way we, we, we cut back a little bit during the season. Coach Painter cut back a few things with our guys and coaching and coaches a little bit too. Sure. Uh, but but it, it is hard, but like, you don't have to be a rush. Don't rush through it. Sure. Don't rush through it, take your time, stick to your plan, hang out. Like I said, we did a foreign trip. 
mm -hmm. right? And the yeah. guys hung out, and they, they, their relationship has been great since last year. And they get to spend a lot of time. And in the NCAA, they did a lot of cool things that wasn't going on like it was <laughs> yeah. back the other two times that I was, I was here. Oh, so it is. So the player's experience is actually a lot different. Than a, the the yeah. player experience is a lot different. That player's lounge is, is pretty nice. <laughs> that wasn't there. That wasn't <laughs> there. They stepped it up a notch. <laughs> they huh? stepped Sweet. it up a notch. Sweet. Well, here's something I'm curious about, and this would have been the way for you guys the first time you went to the Final Four, not the second time when you guys at, at Butler were experienced. But I'm, I'm sure some Purdue fans are curious about this too. You know, we've been waiting so long just to get to a Final Four mm -hmm. that, you know, so much emotion goes into that win in the Elite Eight. But, you know, now all of a sudden it's, it's Final Four time and now you have aspirations of trying to win a national championship. Yeah. What is that process like where you're trying to, you know, celebrate that incredible accomplishment of getting there, but then also being able to kind of like recalibrate and get guys focused for, uh, you know, the task at hand? Yeah, it, it kind of goes to your talk at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah everybody makes a goal to reach the final four, but like really you make a goal to win, be national champion, right? right. Yeah. So you just kind of settle back in, like when we won an Elite Eight, I just kind of like took a step back and like took a deep breath and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And then, then enjoy that day, but soon as the next day after that sleep, mm -hmm. it's right back into the, the goal that we set out to do, and that's to be national champions. Uh, so just a couple more, uh, more minutes here with assistant coach Terry Johnson. Again, this reminder, we'll be doing these shows, fans, uh, throughout the week leading up to that game Saturday night. 6.09 Eastern is the tip-off time for Purdue and North Carolina State. We're saving our North Carolina scouting report talk for tomorrow once we're a little bit closer to game day. Just trying to give you a little bit of a feeling about the, the overall experience here uh, in Phoenix. I want to close with this, uh, Coach Johnson. Uh, and you mentioned it, I hadn't thought about it until you said it, but you mentioned that, that foreign trip uh, back in August uh, where you guys went to, went to Europe and, and spent some time in Germany and some other places. You think about the uh, whirlwind season that is, it has been for Purdue yes. basketball <laughs> and all of the awesome places this, this program has been, starting with that foreign, tri foreign trip going to Honolulu, uh, uh, going to Toronto, uh, going, to, going to Fayetteville, Arkansas for an yeah. exhibition game. Uh, and now, of course, uh, it, it all ends here in, uh, in Phoenix. Man, it's been a, this has been a really fun season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a real fun season. Seen a lot of cool places. And, and, and it's good when you're around great people and everybody like each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that makes it all <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, and you're winning a good portion <laughs> of the year. It, right. it makes things a lot easier and enjoyable and uh but like even if you, we have some hiccups like like families right every sure. family have a hiccup but like you still love one another mm -hmm. and you're gonna wake back up the next day and you want everybody to be successful in whatever they're doing this is a fun group to be around yeah, it is it? a funny group to be around. <laughs> I, I i i said i was going to end with this let me I, I, because now you got me a little emotional here <laughs> win or lose saturday monday the thing for me that's going to really bum me out is that it's going to be over. Yes. I mean, like, this has been so much fun. Yeah, like whenever it's over, like you're not preparing anymore, you're not going to be around each other as much. Right, but right. But you're still going to see each other, but still, it's it just, you just don't want it to end. Coach Johnson, thanks. Appreciate uh, continued it. Continued good luck here as Purdue preps for North Carolina State on Saturday. Again, fans, a reminder, we'll uh, have the show again for you uh, tomorrow, Friday, as we get closer and closer to game day. I want to thank Corey Palm, who was our behind-the-scenes man and producer for this broadcast here today, uh, for Chris Foreman, and for my broadcast partner, Bobby Riddell, as well as Coach Terry Johnson. I'm Rob Blackman. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, and we'll chat again tomorrow here from Phoenix, the site of the Final Four. Now, this is our special Boiler Ball pregame show, and we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, boiler up, hammer down, everyone. <laughs>